All right, any kids, come on down. We'll sing a few songs before we start worship tonight, kids. I believe Bradley and Cooper are going to get some hugs first. <laughs> All right, let's sing the, be ready to sing when you get here, the books of the Old Testament. What's up, fellas? Did somebody have a birthday recently? Is that what I heard? Might that have happened? I thought so. Happy birthday. All right. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. First and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, and Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. All right, and how many books of the Old Testament are there? I'm feeling like you're thinking. 39. Excellent job, Bradley. All right, so let's sing the books of the New Testament. All right, how many books of the New Testament are there? Close? 27 is correct. Very good. All right, so the birthday boy gets it right. 27, let's sing the 27 books of the New Testament, all right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and Letter to the Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. All right, good job. So you guys have been studying in Bible class. What book of the Bible? Have you been studying, have you guys been studying Genesis? About creation? Is that right? You guys have? Yeah. So we're going to sing the creation song. Y'all ready? For day one, sing the books, uh, the days of creation, right? Day one, day one, God made light when there was none. Day two, one, God made light when there was none. Day two, day two, God made sky so blue. Day two, day two, God made clouds and sky so blue. Day three, day three, God made flowers, grass, and trees. Day three, day three, God made flowers, grass, and trees. Day four, day four, Sun and moon and stars galore, day four, day four. Sun and moon and stars galore, day five, day five. Birds and fish alive, day five, day five. God made birds and fish alive, six day, six day. God made animals a man that day, six day, six day. God made animals a man that day. Day seven, day seven, God rested in his heaven. Day seven, day seven, God rested in his heaven. Good job. So what, what did God use to create the earth? You guys know? What did he use? God used his words. He used his voice, didn't he? He said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? God said it. So what did God use? He used his words. Okay, what did God use? Words, right? Words. So God is powerful, and God is powerful in how he said, how he spoke it into existence. All right, let's sing, um, let's, let's see if I've got, let's sing... Um, Psalm 125, and that's going to be about time for our worship, okay? So we'll sing Psalm 125, and then we'll ask our questions. Uh, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. 
as the mountains round about Jerusalem. So the Lord is round about his people. So the Lord is round about his people. Henceforth, even forever. All right, so what is true success? Anybody know? Very good. What is true failure? Living your life and not going to heaven. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. And what is God's plan for marriage? One man and one woman for? For life. For life. Very good job. All right. Let's sing Galatians 2.20 and go back to our seats. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's begin our worship tonight with Worthy Art Thou. <clears throat> Worthy of praise is Christ our Redeemer. Worthy of glory, honor, and power. Worthy of all our soul's adoration. Worthy
Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening with thankful hearts for thee for another day. We pray that you will be with us throughout this worship service, that we may take what we learn and apply it to our lives, and that our worship may be in spirit and in truth, Father. We pray that you will be with everybody who is on our sick list and those who are, who are suffering at this time. And we pray that you will help them get back to a better portion of health, Father. Please with everybody overseas who is fighting for our country and everybody who, need, who needs the most tender love and care. In Christ's name, amen. For our lesson tonight, let's sing, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. At this time, if you will, please stand. Tell me the story of Jesus, right on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweet as that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. This morning we looked at, is there ever a time when it is truly everlastingly too late? This evening we have another question that we're going to be looking at and observing. And it is this, is there ever a time when baptism does not save us? Is there ever a time when baptism does not save a person? Now as we look and consider 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein, that is in the ark, wherein few, that is eight souls were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. We understand that the scriptures are, are very clear about baptism and about baptism saving us. As we consider Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, in whom, that is in Christ, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. The question then arises is how does one get into Christ? We've answered this before. 
Galatians 3, 26 and 27, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, were baptized into Him, have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Baptism saves us. And when someone is baptized into Christ, they have redemption. Forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. There is where one comes in contact with the saving power of the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Ephesians 1.7. But now is there ever a time when someone is baptized when it does not save them? The answer to that would be yes. Now we're going to look at the most obvious, but then we're going to go back and we're going to consider some other thoughts on this question. Number one, number one, anyone who does not hear and have a knowledgeable faith, now I'm going to couple these two together, and yet are baptized, they're not saved. In the book of Romans chapter 10, if you would like to open your Bibles there, please, Romans chapter 10. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe except they what? Hear. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Calling on the name of the Lord means this. When you look at the book of Acts chapter 22 and verse 16, And now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? This phrase, calling on the name of the Lord, is synonymous with obeying the Lord, obeying the gospel, obeying His commands when it comes to the plan of salvation. So as we look at Romans 10, verse 13 again, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? You look at Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of of the Lord. So when we think about someone who has been baptized, somebody says, well... I believe it's okay. As long as you you baptize them, you can teach them later. That's out of order from the Scriptures. That's out of order. Somebody says, well, they don't have to know about Jesus. They don't have to know about the church. They don't have to know about these things. We can teach them. Let's just get them down under the water. All they have done is gotten wet. That's it. Baptism cannot save anyone who has not heard. And number two, anyone who does not believe. Now, the question then arises as far as believe is what must a person believe? We know they must believe. Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, Jesus is so very clear here. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You have a coordinate conjunction here. You must do both things in order to be saved, not one or the other. It's not an either-or situation. Both must be obeyed, for both is commanded here. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. We must do two things to be saved here. Believe and be baptized. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Acts chapter 8. And please take note of the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 34, beginning. And here we have the eunuch, treasurer for Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians. He is in his chariot reading. And as we look at the context, we see that he's reading the book of Isaiah chapter 53. When you go back there and you look at the wording. Here is Philip. The Spirit told Philip to join himself to that chariot. Join himself to that eunuch. He runs. He just didn't walk. He runs. And he says, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? You go on down to verse 34. After they had read the portion of Scripture, and the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, 
of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him who? Jesus. He preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said this. Now listen very carefully. Here's water. He preached to him Jesus. Number one, how did he know about baptism? Because you can't preach Jesus without preaching what? How to get into Jesus. And how does one get into Christ? He's baptized into Christ. He preached to Jesus and they came to a certain water and the eunuch, he said, here's water. What is keeping me? What is forbidding me? What is hindering me from being baptized? Here's Philip's answer. Listen to him very carefully. If thou believest, a little bit. If thou partway believe, if you halfway believe what I've told you, that's not what he said. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. So what is it that the eunuch was supposed to believe? We understand that when you preach Jesus, you can't preach Jesus without preaching how to get into Jesus. But there's something else. Something else that is more than just baptism and how to get into Christ that one must believe. If you have your Bibles open to the book of Acts chapter 8, look up at verse 12, if you will, with me. And I want you to take note of what was going on. Well, when you look at verse 12, but when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? The church. They heard. There's the hearing. They believed but what did they believe? They believed the things that Philip preached concerning the church and the name of Jesus Christ. What happened? They were baptized, both men and women. Somebody says, all someone has to do is have a partial belief and, or a almost there kind of belief. No, if thou believest with all thine heart. Believe what the Scripture says about our Lord. Somebody says, well, I believe he was a good man. Is that good enough? I believe he was a prophet. Is that enough? I believe he was a good teacher. As a matter of fact, I believe he was a master teacher. Is that good enough? No. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Savior of the world. He came from heaven to earth, lived a perfectly sinless life, died on the cross for your sins, my sins, the sins of the whole world, was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is not a partial belief, but it is a belief with all of our hearts. All of our hearts. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the what? The church and gave Himself for it. We must believe all all the Scripture has to say concerning the church, the pattern of the church, the worship of the church, the makeup of the church, the offices of the church, we must believe that Jesus Christ came to establish the church and save mankind, not that the church was plan B. We must believe not part way, but we must believe with all of our hearts. We must believe in the kingdom and in the church. Somebody says, you mean that there are probably actually people out there that have been baptized that didn't believe with all of their heart? I have baptized people before, and I don't want to call it rebaptism because they were not scripturally baptized the first time around. And here's what they've said. When I was young, I was baptized to make mama happy, to make my parents happy, to make my wife happy. I baptized a man that was about 80 years old a few years ago. He said, I want to make my calling and election sure. I want to make my call. I was baptized. I think I was baptized just to make her happy. 
You see, when they were first married, he was not a member of the Lord's church. But she tried to teach him the importance of baptism, but he didn't believe all the Bible had to say concerning Christ and his church. And he knew that. He made it right before his passing. There was another man with the same. I baptized two men like that. I baptized a lady, my mother. My mother came to me and she said, I need to be baptized because I was baptized to make your grandmother happy. That's not what my grandmother wanted. But my mother did not have the faith that she needed. She did not believe with all of her heart. So is there ever a time that a person is baptized that it will not save them? Yes, when that person does not believe and believe with all of their heart and believe what the Scriptures have to say pertaining to the kingdom and Christ. Number two, repentance. Now, boy, this is kind of beginning to be a big one in the world that we live in today. If you open your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 36 through 38, we see here Peter and the other apostles preaching on the day of Pentecost. And in verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Tells them here to do two things. They believed. They believed. Well, what else have we got to do? You have to repent. Here are men and women that have been brought up in a religion and now finding out that they have indeed put to death the Son of God that was prophesied of in the Scriptures that they used to hold to and they were holding to. You've put him to death. You've caused him to be sacrificed. Repentance is not just being sorry for something. I've mentioned this before. It's a change of mind. They had to, to realize, okay, now Jesus came. He came and to establish a kingdom. We, we thought the kingdom was going to be a physical kingdom. We thought that Jesus was going to be a military leader. Jesus frees but Jesus frees from the bondage of sin. He leads, but He leads us how to love and how to go out and to help others love and to be saved. That's the leader that we have. Repentance. A bookmark that I saw at a denominational bookstore, and I always look for this. It said, God's plan of salvation. I picked it up. I looked at it. And it said here, oh, well, that's starting off good. Believe, that's awesome. Be baptized. Remain faithful. Do you see anything missing? Repentance. Repentance. Why? Because in the world that we live in, people don't want to change their mind, thereby changing the way they live their lives. They're having too much fun living in sin, too much pleasure living in the squanders of sin. It brings me too much pleasure, too much joy, but if I can have my sins washed away, hey, then I can continue on. In the book of Romans chapter 6, beginning with verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk, walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That old man 
was to be put to death. And it is put to death if one truly repents. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5, Mortify therefore your members which are in your body, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Mortify, put to death those things, those actions. You look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, those, that, that horrible list of sins, and what did he tell him? And such were some of you. Such were. Past tense. These people had repented. They understood that. But yet many people today, don't, they don't understand that. I can have my sins washed away and I can continue living just like I'm living. The more I sin, the more God's grace abounds. What did Paul say? God forbid. By no means is it supposed to be that way. That old man was supposed to have been put to death. That's called repentance. It's called repentance. So is there any a time, any time at all, when baptism does not save a person, when a person, number one, does not believe, and when a person does not repent. Is there any other time? You know where I'm going next, don't you? When a person does not confess. Romans chapter 10, verse 10, With a heart man believes unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto, that is, in the direction of salvation. Matthew 10, 32 and, and 33 Whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I deny also before my Father which is in heaven. What did the eunuch do in the book of Acts chapter 8? If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. What did he say? The sweetest words to ever be uttered from the lips of mankind. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He confessed his belief in our Lord. We must confess. If we do not confess our Lord, He is not going to confess us now. Those things are the obvious, okay? Those things are the obvious. And there have been times when people just didn't want to confess because it's not the popular thing to do. But now let's look at some other things. Are there ever other times where baptism does not save Yes, when it's not scriptural baptism. When it is not scriptural baptism. I want you to take note of history. In the year 251 AD, a man by the name of Novation was laying sick in his bed. The Catholic Church said, okay, here's what we need to do. He's sick. He, he can't be baptized. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to not bring him to the water. We're going to take the water to him. And we're going to pour the water, some water on him. And we're going to get him wet. They call that clinical baptism. It started out just being for the sick. And then before you know it, it was a doctrine that was accepted not only for the sick but for all. In the year 1311 A.D., sprinkling became okay in that particular denomination, the Catholic Church. So what about pouring and what about sprinkling? All we have to do is look once again in the book of Acts chapter 8. Philip and the eunuch, they, they stopped the chariot and they went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. Why didn't the eunuch say, okay, here, Philip, here's a vessel. You go bring some water to me. John was baptizing because there was what? In Jordan, because there was much water there. When we look at, at even the very word baptism, baptizo, here's what it means. To submerge, to plunge, to go under, to bury. You know in Colossians chapter 2 verse 12, that word means bury, buried with Christ by baptism. The word baptism means a burial, a submersion, to go completely under. First and second century writers state that it is even in reference to a ship that sank under the water. We understand what the word bury means. What do we do when a loved one passes away? We bury them. Brother Jeff Archie asked me one time, he said, Keith, I've got a question for you in relation to 
baptism. He said, how many cemeteries have you ever gone to and there's a nose sticking up out of the ground? I said, I've never seen one. He said, they're buried. I said, they're buried. I want you to listen to, to not members of the church, but even denominational preachers. And you'll recognize some of these names. Martin Luther. Baptism is a Greek word and may be translated immersion, as when we immerse something in water, that it may be wholly covered. John Calvin, the word baptized signifies to immerse, and it is certain that immersion was the practice of the ancient church. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist church, we are buried with him, alluding to the ancient manner of baptizing by immersion. Lyman Coleman, the primary signification of the original is to dip, plunge, immerse. The obvious import of the noun is immersion. The Edinburgh Encyclopedia. In the time of the apostles, the form of baptism was very simple. The person to be baptized was dipped in a river or vessel, such as a, a large enough vessel to be dipped down into. Liddell and Scott, baptizo, to dip in or under water. Thayer, baptizo, to dip repeatedly, to immerse or submerge. Now here's what's interesting. The Greek Catholic Church testifies that immersion was the original practice and continues to practice immersion. The Greek Orthodox Church practices immersion for the remission of sins. But this brings us to our next one. They practice immersion. They say, oh, that Greek word, that means to, to go all the way under the water. Right mode wrong subject. You see, they're baptizing babies. They don't sprinkle the babies. They don't pour water over the babies. They put those babies all the way under the water. Baptism does not save that baby at that time. Only when they get older and have a knowledgeable what? Does a baby have sin in their life? No. No. Babies, babies are innocent. So uh, you have to have a knowledgeable faith. Here's another one. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Does baptism save? All of the time, baptism does not save when a person is taught wrong. Friends, you cannot be taught wrong and baptized right. I want to repeat that, and I say this with all of the love in my heart. You cannot be taught wrong and baptized right. In the book of Acts chapter 19, beginning with verse 1, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. One of Paul's. The Great Commission baptism was already in effect at this time. John's baptism was for who? The Jews. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus was baptizing with the same baptism as John was. It was for the remission of sins. Looking forward to Christ. Looking forward to his sacrifice. Looking forward to his church coming into fruition. But yet now, now it is different. They said we were baptized under John's baptism. I want you to take note as... Uh, as to what they said next. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, what happened? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
they were taught wrong. They were baptized wrong. When they heard the truth, what happened? They were baptized right. Many people have come to worship at other places where I have preached before. It's not been too long ago that there was a man that had been baptized into a denomination. And he said, well, I believe my baptism is okay. I went all the way under the water. And, and I think it may have been for the remission of sins, but I'm not sure. Do you remember what must be believed and what a person must believe with all of their heart? It has to do with more than just baptism for remission of sins. It has to do with the church, the kingdom. You see, that man was baptized, and when he was baptized, he only had an understanding of the Baptist church. He did not have an understanding of the Lord's church. Half of my family stems from that particular denomination. And I love them. But you can't be taught wrong and baptized right. When you look at Acts chapter 19, friends, listen to me. When, you're, when you look at Acts 19, these people were taught wrong. And when they knew they had been baptized wrong, what did they do immediately? They took care of it. They took care of it not the next day, not the next week. They took care of it right then. I want to make my calling and election sure was their attitude. They were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. With a great commission baptism, Matthew 28, and Mark chapter 16, 15 and 16, they made their calling and election sure. Is there ever a time when baptism does not save a person when a person doesn't believe when a person refuses to repent when a person refuses to confess when a person when a person is not truly baptized but rather poured or sprinkled and when a person is taught wrong they cannot be baptized right it may be that you're here this evening it may be that you have not yet obeyed the gospel of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It may be that you're now ready. You're now ready upon your belief to repent of your sins. Luke chapter 13, verses 3 and 5, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You're ready now to confess the sweet name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, to us and before us, Romans chapter 10, verse 10, and then be baptized into Christ for the remission of sins. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. It may be that you're here and you obeyed the gospel many years ago, but for some reason or another, you've erred from the faith. Don't you think that it's time that you come back to God while together we stand and sing?
have not had the opportunity at, the, the, at this time. Um, if you'll come to the front pews at this time, you'll be served uh, the Lord's Supper. Appreciate your attendance tonight. If you are visiting with us, we do appreciate that. I invite you back at every opportunity that you may have. We ask that you would fill out a visitor's card that's located on the pew directly in front of you and just leave that land in the seat so we can have a record of your attendance. Thank Keith for that fine lesson this afternoon. Uh, just a few announcements before uh, our closing song and Brother Don Williams will lead our closing prayer. Uh, men's Bible class meet Tuesday at 8 a.m. Uh, in the morning. Uh, the JCSC Mill and Devo tomorrow night at 6.30. And mark your calendars for September 24th through the 26th. The youth group will be going to Asheville Road Deep Youth Experience. So all youth keep that in mind. Also on October the 2nd, uh, we'll have we'll join other congregations in uh, door knocking uh, campaign. We'll meet at uh, 8 a.m. for breakfast and a little bit of training, and start from 9 to 12. We'll be knocking doors, so I want to keep that in mind. And uh, it's on October the second. It's all the announcements we have. If you will at this time, please stand and then remain standing for the closing prayer. We'll sing the first verse of Take the Name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name. again for this day and for all the many wonderful things that you've blessed us with. Please be with us in this upcoming week and keep us safe. And may we always cherish the things that we hear and, and apply them to our lives. But we know, Heavenly Father, we're oftentimes weak and we oftentimes fail you, but we know, Heavenly Father, that you are always with us and if we return from the things that we do, that you'll forgive us. Thank you so much. And please be with us in Jesus' name. Amen.